In today's episode, Xiaxue sheds light on her staying power as an influencer, hawker hunk Walter Tay on going cashless, and take on a resistance band workout with Fiona Fussy, and dig into a cup of mango curd zareen. Hello and thank you for staying home together with me, Hosan Leong. As businesses resume operations and services, we must continue to remain vigilant and stay socially responsible. Continue to limit our social interactions with each other and if you have to exercise, please do so within your neighbourhood and with people that live with you under the same roof. My guest for today is veteran influencer and she's well known for her colourful hair, her makeup tips and her sharp tongue. Please welcome Wendy Cheng, aka Xiaxue. Hi, hi. Hi, hi how have you been? I've been good, I guess. Just sort of lazing around at home all day long. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so COVID-19 um, has been really a game changer for a lot of us, especially in the, in the, in the realm of the influencer world. Um, it would have yes. affected you definitely. How how did it affect you? The ad revenue, I would say, has gone down like maybe ninety percent with COVID nineteen. I think a lot of companies they are trying to, uh, you know, save up their budgets just in case they need to give their salaries to their employees in case there is no sales or jobs for the next few months, mm. and they rather reserve that money for for that, mm. uh, which I feel is also a more important uh, use of the money rather than giving it to advertising. Mm. So I guess a lot of campaigns are. Also at a standstill because they don't want to launch something now yeah. uh, that they cannot host events you know um, people are just not really in the mood to spend so much money so I think that a lot of things are sort of like being pushed back as well yeah. so when there are no new launches then there's no need for influencers <laughs> <laughs> but you know okay, let's just say look at the bright side right when things start to pick up again for example and advertising money is available again do you think the influencer world will be the first people they give money to? Or where would the advertising budget go? I don't know if this is true, but I, I did study advertising in school. And one of the things that the lecturers actually mentioned uh, to us, uh, which, still, I, which I still remember till now, is that the advertising world is recession-proof. Because whether in a good economy or a bad economy, people still need to advertise. Mm. Um, but I'm not... I'm not 100% sure that that is really accurate from what I'm <laughs> witnessing right now yeah. and just based on logic. I hope that what he said is true but I uh, would say that yes, if, if uh, businesses continue to you know do all those campaigns, they, mm. they would need some advertising as well. Sure. Uh, well, we hope for the best but you know, there are all these yeah. younger influencers coming up because you are a veteran with Mr. Brown and Mr. Miyagi. You are all, you are the... Pioneer, pioneer. Pioneer one. batch, <laughs> the OG. What advice do you have for the younger influencers today? My advice, I guess, because of this pandemic, I guess, is to really just diversify. Mm. Uh, it's really what the finance people always tell us, but people don't really listen. Um, and you know, it's really has just been very comfortable for me this past decade or so. I just yeah. fell into this job and then it earns me money, it earns me a good enough living. La. Not a lot, but good enough. So, mm. And the next thing I know, it's been like so many years and that's the only thing that I do. So I'm just happy that, you know, like in 2019, I actually um, started a social media agency mm. and I started my own makeup brand. Um, and like these two companies are actually doing better than my influencer ads. La. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm kind of glad that, you know, I did that. Yeah. Which is great though to Correct. hear about your, your companies doing so well. No, let's, let's talk about your makeup company that you have. How is it doing in this pandemic period? The good part is that we are not a physical shop. We only sell online. So on that on that side of things, we don't really have a loss. But the bad thing is that I think with this pandemic, people are less likely to want to doll up and buy makeup. When you have <laughs> a mask on, it gives you a sense of security. You're not really showing your face. So there's no need to really just doll up because most of your face is hidden anyway. Mm. But the good news is that we are the only product we're selling right now is eyelashes. So I guess <laughs> it at least can still be seen above the mask. <laughs> you know? So that, that that part is a good thing and also because um, luckily for us, we sell false eyelashes mm. and um, a lot of the girls, they cannot go and do their eyelash extensions extensions now yeah. and they can't stand it that their eyes are bare so we got a lot of customers from that base going to us okay. as well. So that's good and that's bad. Yeah. yeah. So in the course of your career, uh, Xia Xue, there have been a lot of well, I would say controversy lah, because you know, there's been fights on social media, wars with other people and all that. Um, does it phase you? I mean, how do you react to all this negativity? 
generally, I think I'm one of those weird people around who don't really get very affected by hate comments. Sometimes I feel like the hate comments, I really appreciate them because without them, I won't be motivated to do better. Mm. And it gives me a lot of pleasure and joy to know that the people who don't like me, uh, they don't want to see me happy, they don't want to see me successful. And all the more, I have to prove to them that I am. So, right. so that, that gives you the energy <laughs> yeah. and strength to carry on and push Correct. through. La. During COVID-19, you've been at home all this while with your family. Mm. Um, how has it been? I've been mostly like sort of cleaning up my house, which mm. I always found an excuse not to do. <laughs> uh, but and, and somehow it has been really quite therapeutic. Mm. And every day, I'm just feeling quite grateful that you know I'm living in a home um, that uh, enjoy the company of my family members. Mm. You know, I have my own space to retreat to if I want some like uh, privacy. Now, what would be the first thing that you would do once all of these measures are lifted? First thing, uh, okay, I already went to dye my hair uh, the, <laughs> the moment it was allowed. So that was number one. <laughs> number two, I think I really miss all my friends. Yeah. I'm going to have a full on day where I meet them all day long. We are going to go out to a restaurant mm. to eat. Mm. Eat already, we're going to KTV. KTV already, <laughs> after that, we'll finish it. Uh, ending at 6 a.m. with Mahjong, you know. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Yeah, well, that, that was the old normal. So I guess when we go into the new normal, yeah. things will change and we'll all have to adapt. So on that note, thank you so much for spending some time with us, Yashir. And you. I wish you all the best and your family thank as well. You. The government is encouraging everyone to go digital. And that includes seniors as well as hawkers, so no one gets left behind. Here to join me to share his experience of going digital at his workplace, which are two Chai Tau Kuei stalls or fried carrot cake stalls, here's Walter Tay. Hello. Hello, Jose. Hey, thanks for joining us. Um, now, I want to ask you, when did you uh, convert your both your stalls uh, to use e-payments? They started installing the system yeah. end of last year. Then they slowly implemented and did some upgrades to it. I think fully functional, it's early this year. So Walter, I'm sure there are some teething problems uh, when you first set up the e-payment system. So what, what, what were they like? The system problem, the hardware problem, could be like internet connection problem. Uh -huh. So it slows down the, the transaction, sure. which causes a lot of frustration for the customer. Mm. But it's, it's going out. So they, they do upgrade the system and then they have staff here to help us out. So mm. I, I do see progress in this yeah. Okay. What what are the great things that you have experienced? The QR code, I think it really smoothened out the whole process. And the fact that I actually don't need to enter cash, mm. that improves like uh actually issue and like it's easier for accounting as well. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today, Walter. Thank you. Talk to you soon, yeah? Thank you, Hosan. Well, stay with us because after this, Fiona Fusi will take us through our paces. I'm going to show you a full body resistance band workout that you can do at home. Welcome back. Believe it or not, there are multiple benefits when it comes to using a resistance band for our exercise. Not only is the resistance band a great alternative to machines, it is also lightweight, helps to control our focus and promotes better form. So resist no more and join Fiona Fusi for a fun and rewarding workout. Hi, I'm Fiona Fusi and I'm going to show you a full body resistance band workout that you can do at home. All you need is a resistance band and the mat is optional. Let's get started. So the first exercise is called archers. So stand with one leg in front of the other, your other arm straight, and you're gonna pretend like you're shooting an imaginary arrow. Pull back the resistance band with your shoulders. Make sure that your elbow stays up the whole time. Really engage your shoulders. Squeeze your shoulder blades. Last few, almost there. And switch over to the other side. Switch your legs, one leg forward. Shoot your imaginary arrow, this time with your other hand straight, pulling back with your other arm. Keep your elbow up. And this engages your whole shoulder. You should feel it burning by now. Whew. Last few. And next exercise, bicep curls. 
get into a wide split position. Put your resistance band in one leg. Bend your knee, keep your elbow close to your knee and pull as if you have a dumbbell in your hand. You're gonna engage your bicep muscles. You should feel it here. Make sure your elbow always sticks to your knee so that you're isolating your biceps. Keep your back straight and switch over to the other side. Same thing, keep your legs in this position. Keep your arm close to your knee like this and you're pulling only using your biceps. You should feel your biceps. Last few. And next exercise. Now we're gonna do rows. Keep your resistance band on one leg. Come down into a lunge like this. And we're gonna pull. Pull upwards using your lats, your muscle right here. You should feel it. Make sure your elbow sticks close to your body. Don't move it out like this. Keep it close. Keep it tight. Back straight. Squeeze your shoulder blades when you come up. You should feel the burn by now. Ooh, I know I do. And switch over to the other side. Remember, pull using your lats. Stay long. Make sure your form is good. All these movements are slow and precise. Almost there. Whew. Next exercise. We're gonna go down on our hands and knees on the mat, but put your resistance band through one leg and bring it up to the back of your knee. And we're gonna use the other knee just to step on the resistance band to keep it down. When you're on your hands and knees, lift your leg up like this. So the resistance band makes it a lot harder. Adds a weight. You're gonna pulse your leg up. This is isolating your glutes, your butt muscle, and switch over. Same thing on the other side. Keep it at the back of your knee. And remember to use your other knee just to step and press on the resistance band so that it stays still and pulse. Keep your back straight. Don't arch your back. Just isolate and engage your butt. You should feel it already. Feel the burn. Whew. Trust me. It's gonna be so good after. Whew. Last few. End time. Well done. Last exercise. We're gonna do crab walks. Come to the middle of your mat and put both legs now through the resistance band. I like to keep them on the shin. Come down into a squat and we're gonna do crab walks. So take small steps right and left. It should look a bit like a crab. <laughs> That's why it's called crab walk. But keep your butt engaged, keep your thighs engaged. We're working our whole lower body here. Try to sit back even lower with your butt. Sit as low as you can. It's the last exercise. You can do it. Almost there. And time. Whew. Well done. I'm so proud of you. That one was tough. You really worked your full body with your resistance band. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay strong. See you soon. Invest in a good quality resistance band if you are thinking of getting one to help improve your fitness. And do note that like all other things, these bands can break down over time due to normal wear and tear. It's time for a quick break, but don't go away because when we return, you'll be rewarded with Chef Angela May's Mango Curd Verin with Healthy Crumble. A 
Hello and welcome back. What do you say to your guests after serving them a hearty, wholesome meal? Still have room for some more dessert? I rarely say no to a light, frothy, sweet treat because it's almost like a happy ending to a deserving meal. And our chef for today, Angela May, is going to show you how you can impress your guests with a delightful mix of mango curd verine with healthy crumble. Hi everyone, I am Chef Angela May and I hope that you are all safe and healthy. Today we're going to be doing a beautiful light and fluffy dessert, which is a mango curd layered varen. And so with this, once you learn how to make a mango curd or a curd in general, which is a lovely technique to have in your tool belt, you can keep that curd in your fridge and you can have it later on scones or on an English muffin for breakfast or find other uses for it like making a beautiful curd tart. And now just before I get started cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and mask up. And so now we have 240 grams of frozen mango here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start pureeing this super quickly. I like to use frozen because it means that the consistency is always the same and I can keep a bunch in my freezer for storage. Go ahead and puree it until it's quite fine. Okay, so now that consistency is absolutely perfect for me. Now I'm going to turn on a pan, so I want to make sure that my mango is quite nice and hot. And to that, I'm gonna add about 80 mils of fresh squeezed lemon juice. This is approximately two lemons. And to this is about 90 grams of sugar. Just wanna go ahead, stir this in nicely and make sure you get all of those sandy grains of sugar to melt. Now, while I let that heat up, I'm gonna start on my eggs. Now, this is three egg yolks and one full egg. Get this started for a while, and then start reeling in the rest of your sugar. You want to go ahead and keep this until it's nice and fluffy. And then now get ready. I need to very, very carefully not cook my eggs, but put in the mango mixture into my egg mixture. Just lightly pouring it in. That is nice. You want to make sure that you do that really slowly so that you don't cook your eggs and you get scrambled eggs. Okay, and so now I'm going to get this really nice deep pot because I'm going to continue to whisk, so I want a bit of depth here. And then turn it on to a very, very low heat. Continue to whisk this very, very slowly on low heat for about seven minutes. Oh, gorgeous. Now you can see how nice and beautiful and thick that is. I'm gonna take it off heat and just come over here and then using really, really chilled cold butter, I'm gonna start putting in my butter to emulsify. You wanna make sure that your butter is super cool so that it doesn't start melting. This 
be able to keep in the fridge for about a week's time. If you want to save some for later, then go ahead. Just make sure that you put cling film over the top so it's touching the curd so that you don't develop a skin. I'm going to go ahead and chill this down. This is nice and chilled down. So we're going to start building our dessert. So I have these tiny little shot glasses and what I want to do is I want to show these nice gorgeous layers. So I'm going to see if I can get to this all the way down into the bottom of the glass. Okay, and then I've smudged my sides a little bit. Let me turn. We have with us here as well, this is just a bit of a marzipan mousse. So for this marzipan mousse, you would need about 100 grams of marzipan, which you soften up really, really well, and then whip about 200 grams of whipped cream, and then incorporate the two of them in together. Okay, and to this, I just wanna add some fresh berries just to lighten the dish up a bit. For something this size, we can just put about three or four into each. And because you want those layers, you wanna push those berries out to the side edges. Top that up with more of the curd. just want to add some extra texture to this so we're just going to crumble that healthy crumble it's got these beautiful oats almonds and flax seeds in there so it's not just all a smooth dessert now i can't wait to have one of these for myself mm. Mm so bright and so vibrant and so refreshing. I'm so glad I made a big batch so that I can have some now and keep some for the rest of the week as well. I hope you're all staying healthy out there, Singapore. Learning is a lifelong journey and no one is too old to learn or pick up new skills. Seniors who are keen to find out how to buy, pay, learn and play online do check out the We Go Digital page on the Infocom Media Development Authority website. I'm Hosan Leong, and I'd love to see you once again tomorrow on Home Together. Cause home is never far.